Hi there friends and welcome to my beginners tips and tricks guide for Valheim. In this video I will talk about nifty things to know between the beginning of the game and the first boss. So we will begin right away with coastlines. Coastlines are home to really really useful things found at the shores and these are well, next, for one thing, they are a really good uh, source for sustenance, but that's not what I'm looking for. That's flint. Flint is a very, very powerful early game material, unlocking powerful weapons you might want to have as soon as possible. After that, I want to emphasize how useful ruins in the beginning of the game are. While you might be able to build basically everything in the game yourself, here, for example, ruins like these buildings standing around in the middle of nowhere can be utilized really really well and here's how so as soon as you get inside somewhere and that little shelter icon pops up in the upper left corner here you see it right next to the map that means there's enough roof above your head that the game recognizes it as a sealed room so when you pick your hammer up and place down a workbench you will see following things. So let's do it like that to give you the direct comparison. So workbenches need a roof and as you might already have assumed, even though there's holes here and here in the roof, the workbench is usable and here you can repair your items. But more importantly you are now able to craft yourself items. So here goes the knowledge about flint. As soon as you have flint and feathers you can go for flint head arrows which are really really powerful but more importantly you can craft yourself a flint axe which is a huge upgrade compared to the stone axe. And after that we can talk about the early game crafting a little bit more which will be the next tip on my list. A bow is one of the most important things to begin with, so you will need a lot of leather scraps, wood is no problem at all, and arrows can be just simply crafted with wood, or flint head arrows if you have the necessary resources. Why is the bow so important to my, uh, in my opinion? Because with the bow you are really easily able to hunt deer. I'll show you. So, let's see. Deer are important because they offer you not only meat, they also offer you deer hides. To hunt deer effectively, you need to crouch so they don't recognize you, and you will lose the game if they see you, of course, just like this one did. You have to take care while you're sneaking up to them that you stay behind them, not like I did here, that was wrong. The other option to go for with with the for deer hunting is just to go into a hardcore sprint and use your knife. Possible, but way less effective than using the bow. So deer hunting is important for two things. First up, you will need those deer trophies to summon the first boss. And apart from that, you can craft with deer hides yourself leather tunic and leather pants. So you could also craft yourself rack tunics out of leather scraps, but I always recommend these over those because deer hide is not necessary for weapons leather scraps are so whereas this needs a station a, a crafting station upgrade to craft yourself deer hide clothing you don't really need rack clothing too much the first upgrade is just a chopping block which can be made out of flint so as soon as you have gathered enough flint you can create yourself really good armor well good for this level of the game really good armor for almost no price save yourself the leather scraps for your weapons because if you look uh, at it here crude bow needs leather scraps flint knife needs leather scraps flint spear needs leather scraps they are really at many many points and if you want to upgrade your weapons stuff doesn't get better flint axe needs leather scraps Crude bow needs leather scraps, you see. If you use your scraps too much for armor, you will be bottlenecked by them. I made the experience, wasn't too pleasant. So, after these things have been mentioned, I want to talk about base building and how I think about it. Simply said, don't worry about building at all. If you want to build, just go build, because you can tear down everything with 100% re return 
well, pretty much everything. Some obvious things like campfires or such can't be removed without refunds because, you know, it's burning. But 90% of the items here are just, or 95% are just easily retrievable. So if you want to build somewhere, just go for it. This little hut here, for example, well, it ain't much, but it is a place where we can work. So also I want to talk a little bit about fire. Here at this fireplace, you can always, let's remove that, put up at least two of these cooking stations right next to each other. So I haven't tried three yet, but I'm pretty sure you could. Well, no, not really. I haven't tried to get that done, but well, maybe it's possible, but I don't want to min-max here too much, but it's worth mentioning that you can't put up two cooking stations above one fire. But that's not all about fire. You see these graylings here and gray dwarfs in general, they are afraid of fire. So a torch in your backpack is a really nice thing because, let's see, wait a sec. They won't be attacking you while you're wearing a fire. This is also very helpful for the black forest because in the black forest you will meet enemies that are really really dangerous so you see here the grayling goes acro and then all of a sudden he's not too eager to attack me anymore also with the torch you can set your enemies on fire as well quite nifty so that's fire uh, it's your early game friend because with fire you can cook also the raw meat and you can also cook necktails Food, well, while you know, don't really need food, you won't starve if you don't eat, but food amplifies your stamina and your HP. And early game cooked meat and grilled necktails are pretty much the most powerful food you can acquire. So try to grill food as quick as possible because you will benefit a lot from it. Also these birds, as you might have noticed here, can be shot for feathers. Whenever they are not careful, just shoot them, it's basically free loot. All right, now, about base building, we're not quite done with that topic. If you want to go for a real base, plan it thoroughly and plan it carefully. While it's really easy to slap down outposts wherever you want, and you won't be receiving any punishment for that, a really big base, well, you will be feeling bad about it if you have picked the wrong location because you didn't know a few things. So here's the deal. In this game there are a few items you can transport via teleport systems called portals. These are more specifically basically everything considering no everything related to metal is not teleportable. Ores are not teleportable ingots are not teleportable only the finished product is teleportable. Long story short Wherever you want to acquire metals is a really good area to build your base near. So your first bigger encampment or big base could or even should, that's up to you, right next to the border to the Black Forest. Keep in mind that you're not going to be suffering any bigger attacks from the enemies just because you've built in the vicinity there. The enemies roam towards your base, but if you have built a base, it basically shuts down the enemies from spawning. So you shouldn't build too close to the Black Forest if you got some problems surviving there, but in the neighborhood, basically. So apart from that, always consider logistics when base building. This game features a lot of shipbuilding and a lot of ship logistics. So riverbanks or stuff or shorelines are really, really good to at least build in the vicinity of. So for example, we have here slowly the black forest biome beginning. I see that because there's a fur over here. And practically we could just say we, we will build our base somewhere near here and then we can build a a dock facility over here so we can transport ores and ingots by ship and then just carry them over to our base. Very helpful to do that before you build your base because if you basically build your big bad base into the core lands of, uh, of an island, logistics can be a real pain due to that. All right, but apart from that, it's all up to you. I mean, you can't just also totally go for your own way 
and prefer your own things, how and where you build your bigger base. But I want to emphasize, build your bases with a few thoughts behind that. Think ahead before you build a, a, a large encampment, because you will most likely have to stick with it for quite some time. Of course, hoarding in this game, that's another tip, is always a good thing to do, especially things you always n know that you will need. So in the early game, basically every animal crossing your path needs to be annihilated because you will need the meat, you will need the leather, you will need them in, a, in horrible amounts. So basically kill everything that runs, that comes across you. There's uh, not really any issue with that. But if you ever feel like you're not up to that fight, in the early game, practically no enemy is able to catch up with you if you just keep walking. If there's ever anything faster than that, I, think, I don't know if any elite enemies are faster than that, you can always go for a short sprint when they get too close to you. And also, here is our big buddy the troll, probably the most evil thing you meet in the early game. You can take them down with bows quite effectively. They pretty much got no chance of retaliating if you do that. And another thing about trolls, look at this. Troll following me, and here trolls can't jump. So every time, or basically enemies can jump, every time you can cross a sharp, a sharp border where you need to jump, you can make a lot of room good to your enemies. Also, these trolls can be just safely kited away if you don't want to fight them. They are a really, really good source for the next tier of leather armor, if you feel like that. But for now, we just let it leave him be, because I don't want to go for that. So, the last tip I want to go for is now talking about the first boss. The first boss can be triggered as soon as you have two deer trophies and you just need to burn them at the altar. And don't... there's really no need to delay that. Basically, as soon as you have your first suite of armor done and a bow and, nece and the necessary ammunition, you're good to go. The boss is optically more threatening than he is in, in detail. And basically, if you're just kiting around with arrows and taking your time and shooting him down, you will have no problem at all to take down the first boss with just a suite of deer hide armor and a bow. Really no problem at all. Don't sweat it. And after you have killed the boss, you will unlock more options, which will lure you deeper into the Black Forest. But that's all I wanted to say for a beginner's guide and about tips and tricks. Well, no, a beginner's tips and tricks guide. So, my friends, I will leave you here, and I hope that was quite helpful for you. Feel free to drop a comment down below if there are any questions open, or even better, add your own tips and tricks for beginners down there, because I love to have a nice little allocation of information that can help everybody. Apart from that, like that video or leave me a subscription if you like that content. If you want to show some support, I'd be deeply grateful. But most importantly, have fun with Valheim and come back soon. See you then, friends. Bye-bye.